you know, broadcast. You know, in many ways, we are back to where we were hundreds of years ago, where it's pamphleteers, troubadours, town criers, uh, neighborhood conversations, gossip in your community and clan. The only difference is that's all now happening online, and it's happening faster, with much more speed and velocity and intensity than we could have ever, ever imagined. Um, so we've got to serve somebody. I think the, if, if you look, <coughs> in my view, one of the things that has changed, it, it, it took 150 years. Um, but uh, Abe Lincoln was very prescient when he said, you know, you can fool all the people some of the time, you fool some people all the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. And I think that is the big difference that social media has made. There is no more places for brands to hide. What social media means is that every touch point, every brand experience, every phone call, every purchase, every interaction with a vendor, every element is now part of your brand. And so I, I would suggest that that's a much better way of looking at this notion of slave or master. Um, it, is, it, 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 it simply means that, that we are now slaves of reality, of experiences, of things that happen day to day to day. Um, so I'm going to go through four things I, I call myths, and I hope my uh, colleagues uh, <coughs> disagree with me on some of the stuff. So, um, but so, some, some things that, there's a lot of folks out there selling a lot of things about social media, but based on my experience in the corporate brand side, here's what I would call the four different myths of the <coughs> being circulated out there around social media and, and what I would consider to be a, the, the reality the truth behind it. You hear a lot about people saying that consumers are in control of your brand. I understand what they're trying to say, but I think that lets the brand off the hook. You're still in control of your brand. It's just the only thing that has changed is that every experience can be captured and shared and circulated amongst all your customers. That's what has changed. If you do good, that, those good things will circulate. If you don't do well, bad things will circulate. How many of you have watched the United <laughs> Destroyed My Guitar YouTube video? Uh, good, but uh, for those of you who, who have not, when you go home, uh, Google United Airlines guitar, um, uh, or killed my guitar, and you'll see um, uh, a, a video, a very, very funny video that, uh, I want to make sure I get the name right, um, that made um, David Carroll, a uh, Canadian singer-songwriter, famous. He was looking out the window and saw his luggage being mishandled, and one of the, one of the pieces of luggage was his $3,000 Taylor <coughs> guitar. Um, he complained about it. United stiffed him, he complained about it, they didn't do anything. Finally he says, well, I'm just going to write a song about it. <laughs> when I checked this morning, 5.4 million people um, had watched his, uh, his video. And this was only the first of three songs uh, that he's going to be producing about his experience with United. And it has spawned, this, now you have all sorts of United Breaks Guitars tchotchkes that they're, they're starting. So it's, it's, spawned a little cult, he's um, uh, uh, revived his sing singing career, and because he was on, he was so popular on YouTube, I think he's done all the major networks, CNN, ABC, morning show. He's become a cult figure. So anything that happens now can be easily translated and, and moved around the blogs, because that's what's important. Um, there is also this myth that Hey, it's late in the game. You got to have a Facebook page. You got to have a gazillion Twitter followers. 800,000, 900,000, who's counting? Um, you've got to have uh, three or four different blogs. You have to sort of. You have to be everywhere on every social uh, uh, network platform uh, to be effective. And I, I would say that's that's a myth. Um, what you have to do is select the right channel appropriate for your brand. <laughs> 
Um, and I'll give you two examples. This one, of the, one example is the only example that I show here that is a client. Research in Motion is a client of Rotary Partners. We launched the very first BlackBerry almost 10 years ago. Um, and I've been an agency of record ever since. RIM launched its very first blog this year. They don't have a Twitter feed, they don't have, but they're very, very successful because they have a very, very good product. And, and interestingly enough, their, their chief competition in the smartphone market right now, Apple, historically has not been very social media friendly. If you blogged about Apple products, you were as likely to get sued as you were to get a pat on the back. So here you have two companies, they approach social media in a very, very different way, but they approach it in a way that's true to their brand, true to their customer base, and consistent with their corporate and business strategy. They don't have to be everywhere in every channel. They do just fine. It's also a good reminder that at the end of the day, good products and services are your best brand ambassador. Um, finally, there's uh, some talk out there that uh, social media means that, uh, uh, well, if you're, if you're young and, you, and, 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 if, and if you have a young workforce, you have a certain advantage because they pick this up quickly, they grew up digitally, um, that you can't keep this, that social media inherently disadvantages old companies um, and old people like me. Well, I would disagree. I think what, uh, what social media does is it benefits those people who are open to new ideas. Um, there is few auto companies that are more traditional or older than Ford Motor. Um, however, uh, they uh, recently um, hired uh, Scott Monty from Crayon. And he has um, taken Ford Motor down a very, very interesting path, doing some very, very innovative things on social media. In fact, the launch of their Fiesta, um, they actually gave cars out and encouraged folks to blog about it. They've done some very, very sophisticated and interesting things um, for what would one would consider to be a very traditional automobile company. Um, in fact, all of the car companies, all the American car companies, actually are doing some very, very interesting GM is also another company that's doing some very, very interesting things. Uh, now, they've got to get their products in line and consistent with that. But I, I would suggest that uh, um, Ford and GM are good examples of traditional companies, sort of old, stodgy companies that are actually taking advantage of social media in new and interesting ways. Um, Finally, there is this myth that social media advantages the small, nimble, uh, uh, um, uh, boutique, uh, online company. Um, and again, I think that's a myth. I think social media does benefit those corporate cultures that are open and democratic and inclusive um, and involve their employees um, in their communications. And in, as a guy from, a, from the corporate communications side, I think that is one of the more interesting dynamics and changes that you're seeing now is companies are realizing that their employees are not only good workers and good assets um, to produce things, but they also are great brand ambassadors. JetBlue is a, is a great example of that. If you want to see um, uh, employee representation in action, <coughs> So I would argue that, that uh, social media is not, it's not a question of being a slave or a master. What social media does, and social media does very, very, uh, perhaps even ruthlessly, um, it helps separate wheat from chaff. It is like a solvent um, because it will accentuate the very, very good things of a brand and it will eventually erode and destroy those things um, that uh, customers don't want. So uh, I just think Jerry's wrong. <laughs> and uh, I'm the, uh, of course, uh, I'm the, you know, um, I'm the internet guy, so I probably have to, I probably have to take his point of view, but and rather than talk about the way things are now, the reason why I think that 
the future is going to be very challenging for brands if they're going to lose strength rather than gain it. It's because of thing, the way I think it's going to